Yes, you can actually build your own racing simulator without breaking the bank and without taking up too much space. I've been a car enthusiast my whole life and an F1 fan for years now. I knew I wanted to start sim racing someday, but then I saw this pop up online. It's a racing sim collaboration between Aston Martin and Curve Racing Simulators, and it's called the AMR C01, and it is gorgeous. It just looks so sleek and cool that I thought to myself, maybe someday I could sim race. Something to aspire to, you know? I just thought that would be so cool. Until I saw the price tag. On the website, it says simulators start at 57,000 pounds, which is somewhere around 80,000 US dollars, something like that. Hold on, let me check. How much is 57,000 pounds in US dollars? Yeah, $70,000. 69 grand. Hot damn. <laughs> But instead of hanging up my dream of sim racing someday right then and there, something caught my eye. It says Samsung right there in small lettering on the side, and that got me thinking. I've seen those Samsung screens on Reddit before, and they're expensive and all, but they're not $70,000. So I started thinking, if you strip away that admittedly beautifully sculpted chassis of the expensive simulator, what other individual parts might lie beneath? How much cost could they add individually? Definitely not $70,000, right? I mean, really, what is a racing sim? It's just a chair with a wheel and pedals and a huge screen, right? So how much could those cost? I saw a similar simulator pop up recently with the RB18 Red Bull F1 simulator for $124,000. Now, I know sim racing is expensive, but that's the cost of like a real life 911. So if it's between the sim rig and a real life race car, I'd probably pick the real life car. But the RB18 Red Bull F1 racing simulator was nice enough to list the hardware that it actually comes with. And oh my God, the wheel itself is almost $2,000. Okay, let's take a step back here and reevaluate my life because apparently I have champagne taste and a beer budget as they say. So this is when I started looking at building a more budget version of the curve style racing simulator. For my budget version, I knew it would have to have a F1 style chair like the play seat formula which is about a thousand us dollars i knew it would have to have an f1 style wheel like the fanatec f1 esports v2 bundle which is also about a thousand us dollars and i knew it would have to have a super ultra wide high refresh rate monitor like the samsung g9 odyssey here for about another thousand us dollars so i'll also mention that i already have a gaming pc but because these simulators seem like they come with a pretty powerful gaming pc included in their premium price tags at least i hope so I'll list one here. The first pre-built PC I could find with a 4090 in it is an Alienware Aurora listed on Dell's website on sale for just about 3,300 US dollars. So just keep that in mind for any of you watching who don't already own a gaming PC. You don't have to plan on building one, but if you do need one, they are definitely just not cheap. So if you add all those items together, we still have an eye-watering 6,300 US dollars. Ouch. But when you compare that back to the Aston Martin Curve at about 70,000 US dollars or the RB18 Red Bull F1 simulator for $124,000, what we're looking at is closer to just 10% or even 5% of the cost of these ultra premium simulators. But wait just another minute. The first problem was I don't have $70,000 to spend on a racing simulator. But the second problem is I don't have $6,300 to spend on a racing simulator. What are we talking about? <laughs> The good news is there are cheaper racing seats out there and cheaper racing wheels, so let's see just how low we can go. Because the money was only half the battle, the other half is space. You see, when you have an appliance like this in your house or apartment, it takes up a lot of room. And racing sims don't typically mesh well with traditional furniture configurations, so where do you put it? You can't exactly just leave it in the middle of your living room, can you? That's just a bit absurd to think you'd have that much space for this nonsense in your house. But if you do, good for you. But for the rest of us, space is typically a premium. So for a while, I'll admit, I just didn't think I had the room for a racing seat. But then I had a realization. The racing sim videos I was watching at the time were switching back and forth between flat screens and VR headsets. And many of the sim racers were saying that VR racing, although not perfect, was generally more immersive than even the giant curved screen. So I began thinking, what if I didn't have to mount a giant screen to the seat? Then I would only need about two foot by five foot floor space to squeeze into the racing seat and get racing. So with this new plan in mind, I began looking for the pieces. Naturally, as I just mentioned, I wanted to keep this as cheap as possible. My goal was actually to be under 1000 US dollars. So I searched my local classifieds for some deals on used prices. I found not a Fanatec, but a Logitech G29 wheel and pedals for about $200 on Craigslist. I found Found not a play seat formula, but a play seat evolution on Craigslist for again, $200. 
Bonus points for it being in great shape and for being the sleek white with black accent colorway. And to top it all off, I settled on the Quest 2 headset for just $299 at the time on Amazon instead of shelling out $1,000 or more for a Samsung Curve monitor that I didn't have space for anyways. So with all that, we're looking pretty good at about $700 US dollars. Hey, money left over, right? Well, I already mentioned I have my own gaming PC, so I didn't have to buy that. So if you don't already have one, you might expect to spend that much or more on the gaming PC itself as you'll need a capable graphic graphics card to run VR racing games at a respectable frame rate. I'm using a 3060 in my PC, which is a mid-range card, but if you lower some settings, it does just fine with VR. So it doesn't have to be crazy like the PC we spec'd earlier with the 4090. It just has to be some kind of modern graphics card. So once I got all these pieces physically assembled, I jumped right in. Learning to drive the F1 tracks that I had only ever seen on TV brought new meaning to each corner and only got me more excited to watch along with this upcoming F1 season. Games like Assetto Corsa with their seemingly infinite mods made me so happy to die dive in and drive the Japanese highways with strangers and high-powered JDM cars whenever I could steal the minutes to do so. And even flat-screen non-VR games like Forza Horizon 5 brings a surprisingly immersive experience to what is typically a controller-on-the-couch type of game for me. So mission accomplished, until I drove a few too many JDM cars and I decided I wanted to try rowing my own gears for a change. So I found a Logitech shifter for just 50 bucks more and the mounting hardware from PlaySeat cost about another $70. Kind of strange for the flat pieces of steel that hold up the shifter to cost more than the actual shifter itself, but hey, this is sim racing. The money pit goes deep for this hobby, so unfortunately $70 for mounting hardware is nothing. So with the shifter in place, I was able to become that much more immersed for just about 120 extra dollars. After installing the shifter, I was immediately ripping up the Shotoko Highway, rowing my own gears like I was a member of the Midnight Club. The shifter might be the whipped cream on top, but the cherry is this $12 gadget I got on Amazon. For those long sessions or full length simulated races, of course you'll get thirsty and need a hydration system just like the real drivers. So I bought a $12 water bladder off Amazon and stowed it in the back Velcro section of the seat with the drink tube hanging over my shoulder. And with that, I am in complete sim racing love with the setup for less than a thousand US dollars. It is just a sliver of the price of the dream sims thought of by the likes of Aston Martin and Red Bull. Sure, you could offer plenty more upmarket components on your own sim rig or just upgrade over time like most people do but for me i knew i wanted to start simply and cheaply so i hope this video helped you out and perhaps even inspired you to build your own sim rig whether it's vr curved screen triple monitor expensive cheap as hell direct drive logitech g29 it's all cool as long as you're having fun and loving the journey that is sim racing so thanks for watching peace